بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد دين is the for our dunya and akhira when a person is traveling also leaving the home the dua that they read for protection ayatul kursi tafran amal for our own preservation then on the conveyance conveyance by an alladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu mukrinin glory be to Allah who has subjected who has made this vehicle in our control we do not have the power Allah has given us control even control in a horse control in a camel etc so our life is short wa inna ila rabbina lamun qalibun like how we traveling now here on earth we will be traveling to the grave one day the purpose of journey is Allahumma inni as'aluka fi safari hadha al birra wa taqwa Bayati taqwa wa min al-amli ma tarba in such amal that you'll be pleased. So deen first. Allahumma hawin alayna. So Allah make this journey very very easy, simplified for it. Let our task be fulfilled. What we anna bad. And the journey let us reach on time. Let there be barakah in our travel. Ya Allah, you are the companion in this journey. You are, you are my representative taking care of my families. Then, in, 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 in uh, certain riwayat, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min wa'atha is safar. Allah, I seek refuge in you from the hardships, from the difficulties of journey. Wa ka'abatil manzar. And all forms of unhappiness, discontent, connected to, to scenes that are very gloomy, destructive scenes, whether it's an accident, whether it's injuries, etc. وَسُوءِ الْمُنْقَلَبِ فِي الْأَهْلِ وَالْمَالِ وَالْوَلَدِ And evil consequences in property and, and family, so no harm should come to them as well. So a believer has been taught that even in your journey, you don't want to come into situations. Family was traveling to Durban, wanted to supply the parents, two vehicles, blue lights, pull them off, license please, open the window, other person went to check desk, put his hand in, open the door, put the guns to their heads and told them that now you need to move one side collected everything, cleaned them out and take to, took them to a gravel road, uh, convinced them and told them that uh, you need to give us everything. So cell phone, banking, transfer, cash, whatever you have, assets. Then tracker is going to call now. You've gone to an a abnormal location. Tell them everything is normal. So there should be a code word between you and the tracking company, a code word between you and the security company that when you are in a compromise and there is loud speaker and the, the thieves, the criminals are listening to you, then you say a certain word which they will know that they need to send help. You, you will talk like normal, but the code word has to be said. So simple things. That was a five hour ordeal and Allah saved them when they came with another vehicle. So the one team handed over and they were just hijacking people, taking whatever, and then the handover team. Now you can clean up whatever you can. Second team. So they quite organized a very, uh, that's, that's the everyday bread and butter line. So we, we have to catch them by surprise. So Dean teaches us as well. When we read Salah, Salah is complete discipline. When we are making Dua, complete discipline. So even Salah, when we are reading our Salah, we shouldn't even close our eyes. Why? If there is even a harmful animal, then we are encouraged. Nabi Alayhi Salaam commanded killing the two black ones during Salah, that is the scorpion and the snake. Likewise, Nabi Alayhi Salaam killed a scorpion. So, the eyes to be open. So, to have that concentration, and ta'abud Allah ka'annaka taraw, as if you've seen Allah, but you are not oblivious of the environment. You are well aware of the situation. A believer isn't awful and negligent. 
to such an extent that Mawlana Yusuf Rahlali say that even if you are in Ruku, you should not be thinking of Sajda because the command of that time is the Amal of Ruku. Haji Abdul Wahab Rahlali used to say, if you are in Salah and you think of a good action, then Shaitan has defeated you in Salah. So in Salah you think, okay, I'm going to make Tilawat, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, Dua, etc. Then the command of the time was to be in Salah, concentrating on the Amal of the time. So should not be as well this, this mudakara that we've done now, the Doomsday Prepping epoch, Apocalypse series. We've crossed 30 parts with Allah's permission, but we need to see how much have we implemented. Sami'na wa ta'na, Sami'na wa asayna. See, there was an island uh, and vultures were on that island and there were a lot of fish and, 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 and creatures to suffice for their needs enough water etc so and they never had no risk of any wild animals the vultures very happy in a comfortable life and uh, the vultures in the herd as as they uh, increased in numbers then uh, they became more comfortable so there was an elderly vulture who got worried and he seen that hey you know what this is uh, a possible destructive scenario so he told them, he gathered them, he addressed them, he started giving them a bayan, warning them, it has been a long time, we are living on this island, I think so we should go back to the forest where we came from. Here we have no challenges in such conditions that we cannot prepare for any trouble. So the young vulture said, hey, this old man here, he is worried about, uh, he's so foolish, he's probably trying to trap us because he wants to love than the island himself, etc. So he, he told them, you know what? You people are not paying attention. You don't even know how to fly properly. And that may be destructive to you. So build your skills and then come back when you feel that you are safe enough, that you've not lost the, the nature that you have. So uh, he decided that uh, he'll go on his own. Nobody listened to him. And then once he felt he was confident, he came back to the island. But everything had changed. There were dead bodies of vultures lying everywhere. Some were, were the survivors that were injured and, and, and uh, scarred. So he went to the survivors and said, what happened? So after you left, you were living a life of, of enjoyment and fun. A ship came one day and released some wild animals on the island. And uh, initially they were afraid of us, but we had forgotten to fly and our claws had become weak that we could not defend ourselves. So they started attacking us and eating us as well. So we are in this condition now because we never listened to you. We never listened to you. So sometimes we go in our comfort zone and we go so deep in our comfort zones when the siren, when the drums, when, when, when turbulence happens, then we caught unaware. We have regrets, our families, our wife, our children, our modesty, our chastity, our very basic rights have become usurped. So we have to be very cautious, vigilant and prepared. So a person shouldn't wait for something to happen and then generally when things happen, when there's rioting, looting, people get uh, more vigilant. When uh, somebody in the family gets kidnapped, then that family gets uh, vigilant. Another family is waiting for somebody of their family members to get picked up. So how long, how 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 long will we be so foolish and fooled, and 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 cre uh, loving this folly and, and and this dream world? You're living in a country where there is risk to your life, your family's life, your children. Somebody said, okay, I'm going to do security. Okay, I'm going to get the armored vehicle. What about your wife? What about your children? If you're too difficult to pick up, then they'll go for your closest one. How many people in your family will you start protecting? When we're going to protect ourselves? So uh, a person wasn't cautious. A simple thing. People don't wear seat belts. Do you need an opposite vehicle to flick to warn you that there are policemen watching that you need to wear your seatbelt and when you pass you remove it? Now a person becomes paralyzed for life. 
Now saying I'll wear a seat belt, it's not gonna cut ice, not gonna help. So for our own benefit, we still need to be motivated. How, how demotivated we can be. What a, a lack of, of zeal, what a lack of uh, fervor and to, 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 to resolve our own challenges. So there's no enthusiasm for our own selves. So uh, when a person is in a situation, then uh, it is too late then to think prepare to what is needed and then whatever Allah decides after that that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we shouldn't be foolish they say there was a shoplifter who was caught red-handed to steal uh, watches from a exclusive jewelry store so they found a watch on him so he pleaded he said please uh, uh, you know I'm desperate I'm in need uh, I'll, I'll buy the watch so the shopkeeper felt him sorry thought so he was sincere so he agreed he said okay five hundred dollars so the shoplifter then shock said please man you know uh, that's more than i budgeted to spend could you show me something less expensive could you show me something less expensive so you got red-handed you're going to go to jail and spend so many months and years in jail you, you're still negotiating where is your mind why did you even consider stealing so sometimes we take certain decisions and 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 it is our folly that the consequences follow our negligence otherwise the people of the world whether it's the thieves whether it's the righteous so-called people the righteous humanitarians illa masha'allah so uh, what's the whole medical industry based upon is there any medication that will cure you go to uh, we go to alternate medications, go to homeopathic medications. There's a war. Wherever we need to use the medical field, use it wherever we can uh, uh, avoid it, avoid it. But look at the consequences. Go, go deeper into it. So, uh, a, a lawyer, for example, what, what are lawyers there? They're there to protect you, right? But what a price whole judicial system thrives it's, it's a lot of money it costs a lot a lawyer was talking to his client was found guilty of murder so he said you know what there's good news and bad news client surprise why was it possible so he said tell me tell me okay but start with the bad news he said the bad news is you're getting an electric chair you're going to be put on the electric chair so what's the good news he said i got contacts I got contacts, I got the voltage lowered, it's going to cost you some money, but I got the voltage lowered. What's the use? It's still going to die. So when a person is in a situation also, what should we be doing? They say that most victims don't ever resist uh, the attackers. Man qutila duna malihi fohuwa shahid, is shahadat. But shahadat, why is shahadat? Calculated shahadat. So uh, it's better. So, uh, research shows that uh, at least 50% of all cases where uh, an attacker use uh, excessive violence, he use very severe violence, and most, most of the victims gave no resistance whatsoever. There wasn't any resistance. So, a person is in the situation here, you need to get out of it. Now, what are you doing to protect your life, to, to, to fight, to struggle, to oppose, not to surrender? This is a confrontation where we need to oppose, we need to challenge, we need to refuse uh, to give in. In a, a, another uh, report from one of the metropolitans, the people who fight, uh, and resist, get away from attackers much more often than people who offer no resistance. So either way, you'll get injuries, you'll get black eyes, you'll get bruises, you'll get broken fingers, but at least you can get away. So, and sometimes people think, so, okay, uh, it's, it's perception, it'll only happen to me at night, so... Uh, I'm not vigilant in the day, but we look at it, 30% uh, of assaults happen in the day. 
in decent assaults, 48% in the day. 33% of rapes happen in the day. 59% of robberies in the day. Wounding, uh, etc. So, we can see that uh, we are unaware during the day. Is our, our senses heightened at night? I don't go out at night. I take those precautions. What about precautions taken in the day? And then uh, statistics show that in, in one, one case, country, 5,000 rapes, only 460 rapists were convicted. And only 20% of people reported the rape cases. So, do we need the trauma? Then, no matter who you are, you are vulnerable if you do not prepare. So, if you you you're oblivious of the situation, you're just relaxed, you're calm, not aware, then lo let's look at police injury stats. That uh, from uh, the amount of police officers that were assaulted in a certain country, 2,600 of them were female officers, and. Uh, there were around 2,480 assaults, which 41,144 total working days lost. So one third of all assault assaults occur before the officers have a chance to speak to the assailant. So they were taken by, by surprise as well. They are policemen, they've been trained for this, but again, training, but what level of training, what awareness, and how much did we absorb? We learned the skills. Somebody has a, a weapon, somebody carries a knife for self-defense. You carry pepper spray. Do you know that you should see wind, wind direction before you spray pepper? Is it a spray? Is it a, a gel? Is it a long distance, long range? Can you harm yourself? So, so anything that we do, if we bought pepper spray, did we ever test it? buy one just for testing, using, looking, range, distance, effectiveness, etc. So, understanding the situation. Some people want to be heroes. There was a 17-year-old teenager who was uh, working in a store, and uh, there was a robbery, so he, he chased the robber. And uh, when he caught up to the robber, the robber beat him. And when paramedics got to him, he had passed away. So, again, when to be a hero, what to do in that situation. Um, obviously, you've seen Man Qutila Duna Mali for a Shaheed. We are desirous of Shahadat, but each person must make the call at that point in time. We should make a call at that point in time. That's why, if we have a bit of training and preparedness, it will help us making the right decision. Technology nowadays is easy for people to know, go onto Facebook profile, see people are not at home. So those are the people that you're going to rob. The homes that you want to rob, who's flesh and what? Who's got nice cars? Who's got nice bags? We can we can track these people here. We can find them. Your number plates are there in the images. You can track your home. So so we, we've put ourselves at risk. We've, we've, we've compromised ourselves. So... Uh, how a person takes precaution for, for crime, we need to take precaution for our health. This body is an amana. It is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much precautions are we taking to make sure that we don't get uh, sickly? How, how much ibadat, how much salah, how much tilawat you can make when you are ill? Let's look at statistics just to understand this point. If we look at the global deaths, then we look at NCDs. NCDs, non-communicable diseases. What are that diseases, NCDs? Another name is called chronic diseases, which uh, a, a, a person picks up like uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, cancer, respiratory disease, diabetes, etc. So, 2017 statistics, 56 million deaths globally. And uh, NCDs account for 73% of global deaths. 73%. So we worried about crime, but we could die of a heart attack. So what are we doing to make sure we're healthy? We're still into our fuzzy drinks. We're still drink, uh, addicted to sugar. We still use normal salt. So much precautions we need to be taking. So uh, 
look at statistics what are five to 15 year or 14 year olds dying of um, simple things drowning so our pools are they open are they closed um, road accidents how, how 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 cautious are we with regards to the children when crossing the road etc putting the seat belts on 15 to 49 year olds what's the common cause of death cancer cardiovascular disease so uh, a person knows this is a risk what preparation are you making the kids how cautious are we the stove is on we leave the kitchen ch children to go in the kitchen boiling water how, many, how much times boiling water they've tripped over and burnt the stove uh, they've burnt and passed away tea pools are left open etc so we have to to, to take uh, precaution water although we get in water and a municipal system says it is is clean but we should have a proper water filtration system besides the the different processes the the, the nutritional benefits that are lost in the water we should be having our own ball systems so so much details which we, we need to be very cautious and and, and see how, how much physical activity am i involved in how much lifestyle changes am i ready to make what dietary we only go for diet to to look thinner and slimmer but just about being healthy that's the command of allah that's an amanat so all these factors uh, which 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 dominate and we see in other other causes of death la ilaha illallah what about uh, people stalking our children educating your kids once a week you need to ask them these questions here did anybody touch you did anybody try to get close to you did, did anybody show you any pornography did you see any pornography whether it's your brothers, your sisters, your family, your relatives, your teachers, anybody, there is no exception. So the parents need to be very vigilant and, and question the kids. There was a case where we know this is a real time story where the brothers were abusing the sister. They were molesting, sexually abusing the sister from a Muslim home. And uh, she wanted to commit suicide. Very long story. Time is up. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. The amal for today is to spend time with the ulama on the day of Qiyamah. It will be told that I have not given you ilm to punish you. Go to Jannah. So to make our children ulama, etc. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah.